Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper and to part three in this series that I'm doing on defending the Creator's calendar. Now, what we're going to talk about in this video I think is one of the most crucial things that anybody should ever understand when it comes to the Creator's calendar because it dispels so many errors and in part three this is what we're going to cover. Passover, okay, unleavened bread, forgive my spelling as usual, and first fruits. Now the reason this is so critical, and forgive me, let me turn my board here so we can see this, I'm writing from an angle, is the reason this is so crucial to understand is because the most important being that ever come on this earth, Messiah, was impaled and turned in the grave and rose again on the third and appointed day. Now, the reason that is so crucial to uh, be able to take in is because every aspect of what happened detailed out in that justifies the Creator's calendar, okay? Now, I've made a lot of notes of Scripture here, so I'm going to mark a lot of Scripture on the board. But to begin with, where you need to go to learn about the Creator's appointed times of worship, um, and I think we've already covered some of it earlier already as far as referencing to Leviticus, but if you look in Leviticus uh, chapter 23, I'm just shorting Leviticus there, but that chapter right there details all the Creator's appointed festivals, okay? And Messiah fulfilled the first part of them when he was here, all right? Now, the layout for what took place, we're going to write this down right here, is the 14th day is Passover. Of the first month is Passover, as you can read in Leviticus 23. Then the next day is Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a Sabbath day. I'm going to prove this in a minute. And then the next day is first fruits. Now all these important things take place on these days, okay? But I'm going to write first month of the year, all right? Now, let me move my board up right here, and I'm going to start writing scripture. Now, as far as the crucifixion, it taking place, this is where you can find it detailed in scripture, um, the events. Um, and now I encourage you to read all the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in full context, but I'm just quickly referencing the information here right now. is Mark 15 and 42, John 19 and 31. Uh, Leviticus 23, as I just covered, you want to read uh, verses 6, 7, 11, and 15. And John 19 and 42. Now that all details out the information about the crucifixion, okay, that it was on Passover. All right, you should find that information in the context of those pages. Not only this, but um, the unleavened bread and him being in the grave and then the resurrection taking place. You can find detailed out in Matthew uh, 28 and 1, Mark 16, 1 and 2, Luke 24 and 1, and lastly, John 20 and verse 1. You can find in that detailing out that obviously it was the first day of the week that he was arisen, and that is the day of first fruits. Matter of fact, uh, First Corinthians uh, states in chapter 15, 3 and 4, and then verses 20 and through 23, Paul goes on to state, or Shaul, however you prefer to pronounce him, is that he goes on to state that Messiah was the first fruits of those arisen from the grave. All right, now, what's important to take away from that is this, all right? The third day factor, all right? That's what I'm going to label this. This is where the Creator's calendar gets justified, all right? Today, we have the Roman Gregorian calendar, the beast calendar from the beast system in Rome. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, as you can find that those that do the Saturday Sabbath, all right, people in Sunday Sabbath, they're clueless to this. They don't even keep the feast. Um, if you do, I don't even know how you work that out, so uh, 
I ain't even getting into that. But those that keep Saturday, here's what will happen. Now we're going to pretend this is the Roman calendar for many. You got Monday, Tuesday, when, and you know all the other pagan names. All right. So anyway, let's say Passover falls on this day by new moon. You know, and the Creator's calendar taking place. And if you haven't seen Restoring the Creator's calendar series, you can check that out right there. What I'm talking about. All right. Here's the problem. If that falls on this day, and Passover, here's the 14th day on the Creator's calendar. It can be any arbitrary day on the Roman Gregorian calendar. I'm just making a point. Here's actually the 14th day. All right, well, then this makes the next day on the Creator's calendar because, you know, you're moving through it, and it floats through the Roman calendar. The next day, there's um, unleavened bread, and then the next day would be the day of first fruits. Well, here's the problem. The Saturday Sabbath's way on out here at the end of the chain. All right, so they're going to keep Sabbath out here, and this is just treated as arbitrary day. You know what I'm saying? This is counted as an important feast day, but they don't treat it as that it's the Sabbath. And that just don't work out. That is not how it is, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you that the situation that took place in Scripture, if you read the context of the pages of Scripture, Messiah was in, crucified on the 14th day. This is day one. He was interned that evening. Then he was in the grave all throughout unleavened bread. He's the, that was representative of the bitterness of sin. You know, he has become our unleavened bread. Uh, he was our Passover lamb. And on the 16th day, he was the first fruits risen from the grave. Now, that's the third day, as we can see here, day one, day two, day three. Now, people say you have to have the three days and three nights. All right, now look, um, I could get into the fact that the uh, heart of the earth People refer to the heart of the earth. Some people refer to that as Jerusalem, you know, that he done his ministry for three years. I'm not even going to get into all those things. What I'm going to get into is these scriptures that state on the third day he would arise. So if he was killed this day, and this is the second day, and then he arose on first fruits in line with the Creator's calendar, there should be plenty of evidence of that, correct? I agree. Well, here they are. All right, now I'm going to... Um, erase a little bit of that right there so I can get the rest of this info up here. As you can see here, and I'm going to read some of the scripture as that I write it up, is I think this is one I should share right here, is John 2, 18 through 19. And let me see, I believe I have that marked off right here. And I'll read that to you very quickly what it says. It says, And the Yehudim answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you are doing these? And Yahushua answered and said to them, Destroy this Mishkan, which is temple, and in three days I shall raise it up. Okay? In the third day he rose up. They destroyed him this day. He arose on the third day, which is the first fruits. Okay? And also remember the 15th day of each month, that's a Sabbath. So this was the high Sabbath spoken of in Scripture as well. All right? It was a high Sabbath because it was a Sabbath day, and it was Feast of Unleavened Bread starting. All right? Now, that was John 2 and 18 gives reference to the third day, Messiah himself said he would rise on the third day. All right? Now, also we have Matthew 16 and 21, 17 and 22, 20 and 18. Those state on the third day. Okay? Not three days and three nights, but on the third day. All right? Here's some more witnesses to that. Mark. 9 and 31, 10 and 33, those state in that account on the third day, all right? Now, let's see, Luke 9 and 22, 13 and 32, and actually I want to read that one right there, I think that one's powerful as well, let me turn to that, here we go, Luke 13 and 32 states, and he said to them, Go say to the fox, see, I cast out demons and perform healing today and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. Okay, the third day, first fruits. All right, now um, 18 and 31 also has a reference to that. And then also uh, chapter 24 which in verse 7, 19, and 46. All right, now you can find all that scripture I shared with you states directly the third day he will rise. Not three days, three nights, but the third day. That is a wealth, a wealth of testimony. Now, um, Matthew 27, 
I've tried to lay this out here. I believe this is the two verses that people draw so much issue with and build a doctrine off of for the three day and three night, which is their attempt to disprove the Creator's calendar. Now, if you turn in the book of Matthew to that, and I should have had this marked ahead of time, I will turn and read that with you as well, what it says. Twenty-seven and verse sixty-three states the following, saying, "Master, we remember while he was still alive how that the, the, that deceiver said, after three days I am raised. Command then that the tomb be safeguarded until the third day, lest his Talmudin come by night and steal him away, and should say to the people he was raised from the dead, and the last deception shall be worse than the first." Okay, well. You know, that's not enough for me to build a doctrine off of. All right, I'm just saying. And now Mark, um, if you flip over to Mark 8 and 31, 8 and 31 states, And he began to teach to them that the son of man, being of Adam, has to suffer much and be rejected by the elders and chief coenim and scribes and be killed and after three days to rise again. All right, once again, that to me doesn't build a doctrine um you know, for three days and three nights, the third day. Here we go. Killed on the 14th, second day was the 15th, and the third day he rose from the grave. Ladies and gentlemen, he fulfilled the Creator's appointed times of worship on his calendar on the set time. Um, you know, I mean, I find it so interesting, people don't understand the types and symbols of sanctuary, is because when Messiah was killed, at the time of day when he was slaughtered, and, and, I, and I say slaughtered, I mean the lamb was to be slaughtered, he would give his life for us and was slain. Um, that time frame when he was killed, the evening sacrifice, that was fulfilled. So check mark for that. Passover uh, type symbol checked off. The bitterness of the unleavened bread, the uh, bitterness that he took on of the world for us so that we may have salvation through belief in him and keeping the Father's commandments. Uh, and he paid that for us and laid in the grave on the unleavened bread, beginning that feast. Check mark fulfilled. The first fruits, you know, before that, um, long story short, the people were supposed to bring the first fruits, the harvest to the priest, the Kohen, and he was to wave that as a wave sheaf offering of the first fruits um, before Master Yahweh. And uh, I could get into all that types and symbols, or you could do your due diligence and study it for yourself. Okay, so now we move to the last portion of this video and what I want to cover that I think is so crucial and that is, you know, Matthew, um, the scripture written there in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 um, that so many people have built a doctrine on. Um, you know, those two verses, that I, uh, scriptures that I shared before, you know, some people can take that kind of sketchy, but um, people really do build a doctrine around that verse and they try to make scripture fit into that now what i will tell you is this i'm going to explain it to you and i know you've been waiting throughout this video and i've done that on purpose because those that are haters um and want to be naysayers i've showed you an entire wealth of scripture um that stands for risen on the third day i've showed you one verse that says three days and three nights so how do we make that work well i'll tell you very very quickly what we're going to do right now is we're going to erase this off and we're going to rewrite out right here. Here's the calendar. The 13th night, the 14th, which is Passover. And I'll skip the 15th for just a second. Write 16. Now, some events played out. As you read all the Gospels in context, we find that Messiah ended up in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that night, he was taken. Now, what I'm going to show you is that in the heart of the earth, you know, we find that scripture um, in Matthew 6, um, I believe it is um, chapter 9, yeah, chapter 6, verse 9, says, um, you know, our Father who is in the Shemayim, let your name be Kodesh, um, let your reign come, let your desire be done on earth as it is in the Shemayim. Now, a lot of scripture nowadays that... Um, has been um, revised, looked back over, like the Hallelujah Scripture says, on earth. But now, back in the day, the KJV, 1611, says in earth. All right? 
Now, so Messiah was in the heart of the earth, is so it says. So what was that mean to me? And to anybody that looks at that in context now with all the other scripture, it means that he was suffering for us in the heart of the earth. And to me, Jerusalem is the heart of the earth, I'm just saying. But that night, he was taken from the garden. All right, so there's night. We're going to get this three-day count done. All right, three days and three nights. He was taken. All right, so this begins the count. So let us begin the count off. And we'll get your three days of Jonah. All right, three days and nights of Jonah. And show you that that's still fulfilled too. He was taken and beaten. Um, you know, he was taken and put before uh, Caiaphas and, you know, taken back and forth from one court to the other. You can see the text of the scripture. Um, long story short, Pilate. And then the next day, day and night, we see he was beaten and he was impaled upon the stake for our sins. Please keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, he was a Kodash being. He came for our sins. All right, then the next day, on the unleavened bread, as we already covered, he was in the tomb day and night. And then the next morning, he was arisen. Now look at our Creator's calendar still intact. Passover, um, unleavened bread, and first fruits. So not only is the sign of Jonah fulfilled in Messiah because uh, you know, he was not afflicted, okay, until that night. No affliction ever came upon Messiah. He was never harmed. He was never touched until that night. And it began. And he was afflicted in the heart of the earth, right there, beginning that night, impaled the next day after being beaten and, and so on is in context of the scripture. And then unleavened bread, he laid in the tomb. And that next day, he was arisen. Now, there's three days and three nights. So I don't, I, I mean, I don't know what more needs to be said or can be said to satisfy those that want to build a doctrine off one verse. Ladies and gentlemen, so many doctrinal things have been in error off of somebody taking one verse and making a doctrine out of it. Now, we've seen here the third day arisen, so we're golden, okay? But for those that want to look at that situation, now that should be resolved. That one verse should be resolved. I mean, there should be no more further questions asked, okay? Now... I'll say this, Messiah, Yahushua, that is the one that came and died for me. Master Yahweh was my salvation, but that man right there came to be uh, my uh, atonement, okay, for my sins. And he paid the price for you and me, and he fulfilled his father's calendar, and he fulfilled everything that was written. He is coming back. I encourage you, if you don't believe in him this day, you need to. Um, and on, uh, to finish this off, if anybody has any questions uh, concerning this, please, by all means, share them in the comment section below. Also, if you have any uh, questions or ideas of a video you'd like me to do next in the series, something you don't know about the calendar or don't understand, by all means, share some ideas, and we'll keep these videos cranking out. And I hope that has been a help to you. I hope that gives clarity and peace of mind, because, ladies and gentlemen, in the world we live, we need peace now more than ever. And until we see you again, guys, I hope you have a very blessed day in Yahushua name.